In this video, I'll show you how to use the so-called LMFIT tab, which is used to deconvolute our RPES momentum maps into individual orbital contributions. Um, don't worry if nothing happens if you click on this uh, uh, option here, because you first you have to load our experimental data. So the data that I'm going to load is uh, here is in the example data directory. Um, so this is the data of the so-called M3 feature of PTCDA on Silva 100. So this is exactly the data which has been published in this paper. And so the M3, so we, what we're looking at is this M3 feature, which is a an emission feature, the binding energy of about uh, three V below the Fermi level. And we want to deconvolute it into C, D, E, and F. So what we have to do is, you also of course have to load uh, um, orbitals. So we go to the load orbital data and these are already here in the same folder, example data, we load those four orbitals. And then we can start the deconvolution once it is loaded. Now it's loaded. Uh, by the way, if you have several, so now if you go to uh, LM Fit tab, then we get a new tab here. I close it just for a second, just to demonstrate you something. If I have, for instance, if a second uh, data set loaded, like this, and now I do tabs, open LM Fit tab, then I am I can select which slice data tab I want to use for the deconvolution. In my case, it's this M3 uh, PTCDA feature. In case there are several orbital data tabs <coughs> available, then I'm also able to choose here which orbitals I want to use for the deconvolution. But now I <coughs> click here and want to uh, load. Yes. So now. I have a new LM fit tab and what you see here is uh, on the bottom you see four uh, plots here the left one is the experimental data just in a smaller way form and you can scan through the <coughs> the uh, kinetic energy slices here uh, then the next one here selected orbitals I can select the four orbitals that I want to use for the deconvolution and then you see here a sum of weighted orbitals. So by def default, the weight of the orbitals, of all the orbitals are essentially one, so equal weights for all of them. And yes, I mean, you see if I, for instance, change here the weight of one orbital here, uh, then it also changes here this, um, image here and the, 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 the plot to the bottom right basically is the difference between the experimental data and the sum of the weighted theoretical simulated orbitals and what is written here in the, at the top here is, is the reduced chi squared which is which is which is also um, dynamically updated if you input values you see that uh, uh, this chi squared value, maybe I'll put in a larger number, is changing. So the goal, of course, of the deconvolution is to determine those weights automatically. So what I need to do is I need to tell the program which uh, parameters I want to vary, which I want to fit. In this case, for this application, I want to vary the, the weights. So I have to check on the four weights of these four orbitals c d e and f which are called here with the id two three four five so i have to check those uh, weights here and then there's additional options here for instance there's a, 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 a way to um, add a constant background or include a constant background in the in the fitting procedure 
Then I should also check here the other options. For instance, what is uh, here actually what I want to do is not only the absolute value of the wave function squared, but I want to have the full, uh, also include the polarization factor. In this case, this is data from the tor toroid, so I use this option for the polarization. Uh, symmetrization is not needed. And the angle of incidence I should also change here, which is, I think it's 45 degrees. Okay, then in principle now I can start a deconvolution. Uh, there's one more option that I want to show you here, is this resolution, which means that uh, I can use a coarser grid for the deconvolution, k-grid for the de deconvolution. This means that the deconvolution will be faster. So this would be an option if you want to make a few tests before you go to the really to the to finer grids. Yeah. So maybe I just leave it here, and then I can click on fit here, and you see for the fit you have several options here. Um, maybe let's start with only this slice first, which means that only the, the energy slice that is chosen here will be fitted. Yeah, so I click on fit, should be done in a, f a few seconds. So then I get a new tab here. So this is basically the input tab where I make, make the settings for the fit. And then I get the result tab here. And you see, uh, just to, because we, every time I click here on fit, I get a new result tab. So this result tab gets a, a timestamp here just to be able to distinguish several several uh, attempts for fitting. And then you see here the result of this fit for the single slice. You see here the weights have been uh, determined. Also, the, there's a background which has been uh, fitted. And then you see the result. So bottom left again, this is the... Oh, wait, wait a second, probably you should... This should be changed. Probably I was fitting slice number 25, so I should slide here to 20. Um, and this has been, this uh, data has been fitted by this uh, weighted sum here. And then you see here the reduced chi squared has been is with this number you want one to the power of uh, 1.071 to the power of three and uh, you see a map of the of the differences yeah, in principle you can also now uh, apply the cross here here on the sky squared and then have a look at the particular differences here uh, okay but for this application, actually, I don't want, I not only want the deconvolution to be done on, for a single slice, but I want to do it for each slice individually. And this is this option here. So I just change here the option to all slices individually, click on fit again, and then it, this will take a few seconds or maybe a minute, uh, because now every energy slice is fitted individually or deconvoluted into those four orbital contributions plus a background. Now, okay, the results are done. So this is now the new result tab. You see, I got now two result tabs here. And now what you can see, if I'm now sliding through the energy by kinetic energy slices, you see that uh, the sliced data tab, of course, here is changing, but also the sum of weighted orbitals as the uh, residual. Okay, and you also see that, uh, of course, it is at those numbers in a graph, which you can be, which you can view here. Just click on open plot. And then you get uh, the weights. In this case, we only fitted the weights. 
as a function of the kinetic energy. And you can use that's basically the same kind of plot as you have already seen for the uh, profile plot. And we have added now an option in the menu that you can also export this the data that you see here on the graph uh, as a text file. This also works now for profile plots. So if you click here, then you can export it in a, in, a, in a raw text file format that you can maybe use in another program. Okay, that's I think what I wanted to, to show you in this tutorial.